Good day everyone, this is uh, Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. So, today's video may seem a little out of place uh, compared to kind of the rest of the, the videos that you're covering this first week. But I want to go ahead and I want to attack these concepts very early because uh, uh, running concomitantly to this pathophysiology course, uh, most likely, uh, you will you are taking um, cardio uh, cardiopulmonary anatomy and physiology coursework through the respiratory program, uh, and you'll generally spend about a month or so of your first uh, semester uh, on on cardiopulmonary anatomy and physiology, but before moving on, uh, maybe even more than a month, depending. It, it, Pretty much the first it's, it's the, the 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 first half of the semester, and lecture will be on cardiopulmonary uh, anatomy and physiology, and then you actually you talk about your treatment modalities and uh, some of the uh, patient assessment, all that. You, you should be doing that in the lab at this point. But uh, something that comes up fairly early on is uh, the concept of ventilation versus perfusion in the lungs, and there are a lot of misconceptions. They're not necessarily misconceptions, but I don't think that this concept is, these concepts are explained uh, very succinctly uh, or very intuitively at all, and I'm going to try to attack that and uh, hopefully bring some intuition into this. So we know that at this point that air ventilation is air going in and out of the lungs. That's what ventilation is. Uh, and uh, part of uh, what's kind of associated with that is, is as um, air goes into the alveoli and the alveoli expand, um, oxygen molecules smash into the, the inner membrane, the inner surface of the alveoli, and they smash in, and they're able to diffuse uh, through that membrane into the blood and, and hopefully are attached to a red blood cell um, in the circulation that's going through the lungs. And then that red blood cell can take the oxygen to the, the tissues. And um, there's a ratio, uh, what's called uh, the VQ ratio. It's ventilation, um, that's the V. And Q, we, in respiratory therapy and a lot of physiological formulas, Q, and sometimes it'll put a little dot on top of the Q, um, refers to uh, perfusion or, or even circulation or cardiac output, uh, depending on the formula you're using. Um, just because all of the other letters are are representing other things, as you'll soon find out. So often, whenever you see Q, know that it's going to be cardiovascular. It, it's either going to be uh, talking about perfusion, cardiac output, um, circulation, so something on the lines of that, uh, some sort of uh, a flow, a flow of, of, of blood. Um, so when what we can do is we can compare the amount of ventilation, the amount of air that goes in and out of the lung, to the amount of blood that goes through the lung, and that's called the, the VQ, or the ventilation perfusion ratio. Um, ventilation is on top, so it's the numerator, and perfusion is on the bottom, so the, the denominator. And what we do is we compare those two, and um, obviously it's a fraction, um, but we can turn fractions into decimals. And uh, the, the normal VQ balance is about 0 0.8 or 80%. So let's say I have a normal person, and um, uh, I look at their VQ ratio. And let's just say, for, for some, the, the sake of simplicity, let's say that their ventilation is 10 liters a minute. So every minute, or what we call the minute ventilation, every minute, 10 liters of air goes in and out of the lungs. Well, if they have a normal VQ ratio of 0 0.8 or 80%, what is 80% of 10 liters? Well, it's 8 liters. Hey, there's my clock again. So um, 10 liters of air going in and out. They have a normal ratio of 0 0.8 or 80%. So they should have 8 liters per minute of perfusion. And that would be normal if, if let's say, you're, that, obviously that's a pretty big minute ventilation, uh, 10 liters per minute, as you guys will find out. But uh, just to make the math a little easier, we'll, we'll go with that. So 10 liters per minute going in and out. They would have to have eight, li eight liters per minute of blood perfusing through the lung to have a ventilation perfusion ratio of 0 0.8, right? Because 10 over 8, and 8 obviously is 80% of 10, and that's where I get that 0 0.8 or 80%. Okay, so 
let's say that I get into a situation where maybe I have more perfusion than ventilation, or I have more ventilation than perfusion. When that occurs, we call that a VQ mismatch. That means that there's a mismatch, that this ratio of ventilation and perfusion has been shifted, and maybe you have more ventilation, maybe you have more perfusion, um, but be that as it may, if the ratio, that 0 0.8, is significantly altered one way or the other, we have what's known as a VQ mismatch. Okay, so we have VQ mismatch. Well, the way I look at the next two concepts is I look at these as types of VQ mismatch. And um, one type is going to be related to the ventilation, whereas the other type will be related to the perfusion. Okay, so we have ventilation perfusion. Oh, hopefully everyone under, understands uh, what the VQ ratio is. And we compare ventilation to conf uh, perfusion. And then hopefully everybody understands what VQ mismatch is. It's a mismatch of perfusion to ventilation or ventilation to perfusion. Uh, kind of depends. Now what I do is I go, okay, well, within the, the, uh, the class of VQ mismatch, I have two subcategories. And the two subcategories are known as shunting and dead space. I'm not going to talk about what they are in detail, but I want you guys to at least have an intuitive understanding of what's going on. So when you start doing uh, shunt calculations and uh, you start uh, calculating um, dead space and uh, so on and so forth in, 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 in a couple of semesters, you'll have an intuitive understanding of what we're really talking about. Okay, so let's talk about shunting first. Okay, what a shunt is, is a shunt is a situation where I have normal or relatively normal perfusion. Okay, so the perfusion's okay. I've got blood going through the lung, but I don't have good ventilation. So shunting is a type of VQ mismatch, and generally it's a severe type of VQ mismatch. Generally, when somebody has significant shunting, we put them on um, high concentrations of oxygen, and they don't get better. So generally when people say, talk about significant shunting, this is, this is pretty bad shunting. Um, but it's still, it's still more or less a, a form of VQ mismatch. It's just generally a very significant VQ mismatch. And it's the type of VQ mismatch where I have normal or I have okay perfusion, but I don't have good ventilation. So some things that can cause this would be uh, atelectasis or um, collapse of alveoli. And you guys, don't worry, you guys want to talk a lot about atelectasis um, and alveolar derecruitment, where my alveoli, for a myriad of reasons, can collapse. Um, I can have adult respiratory distress syndrome, something you guys are going to talk about in a lot of detail. Um, I can have a mucus plug from, from asthma or from cystic fibrosis or from bronchiectasis. I have mucus plug inside the alveoli. I can't get air in or out of the alveoli. Um, I can have uh, maybe a collapsed lung or something called a pneumothorax where um, air gets in between the lung and the, and the pleural space and, and the lung collapses. And Maybe I'm still getting some perfusion through the lung, but all those alveoli are collapsed. Or maybe I have a large collection of fluid in the pleural space, a, a what we call um, sometimes we'll call it hemothorax if it's if blood and there is a trauma, or sometimes we'll call it a pleural effusion if it has more of a medical type of cause. Um, that can all cause that. So shunting is okay perfusion, but really bad ventilation. And then we have what's known as dead space. And dead space is just the opposite of shunting. Dead space is I have normal or relatively normal ventilation. I've got air going in and out. The alveoli is functioning, but I don't have good perfusion. So air can get in and out of the alveoli, but I don't have perfusion through the lung. And lots of things can cause this. Probably the, the big one that we need to be worried about at this, at this level is something called a pulmonary embolism, where I, I basically have a clot um, that travels into the lung and blocks um, one of the arteries in the lung and prevents flow of blood uh, through the lungs. Clearly, large pulmonary embolisms are very bad, very dangerous, and we'll talk about them a little later on 
um, in this uh, pathophysiology course. Okay, uh, before I wrap this up, I want to show you guys some more of my bad art here. So here I just have some pictures, and hopefully this will make it more intuitive. So here I have a patient with normal ventilation, so the green arrows, airs in, airs out, and normal perfusion, blood's flowing through. Here I have a patient with shunting, and you can see that alveoli has collapsed, air's not getting in or out, but I still have good perfusion. Okay, so this here is shunting, collapsed alveoli. Here I have dead space, and you can see I have a big old clot in the uh, circulation here, so blood is not being able to go through here, but I have relatively normal uh, ventilation occurring. So this here is dead space, this here is shunting, and this here is uh, normal. Okay guys, hopefully that helps out, and hopefully um, this will get you on the right track of thinking about all these concepts, and they won't be as confusing when you run into them a little later on in the, in the program. Take care.